He's a phenomenal journalist, and he is the author of the hip hop work I Can't Stop, Won't Stop. Next, I'd like to call up to the stage the dynamic Miss Mary Holmes. such as Seen and Not Heard, Philadelphia Women in Hip Hop. Next, I'd like to introduce a man that has established himself in Pittsburgh over the past decade or more, Mr. Paradise Gray. Let's give him a round of applause. Quarters, uh, an entity in hip hop which helped get search artists to stars such as Eric B. and Rakim, Big Daddy Kane, KRS One, Public Enemy, Salt and Pepper, De La Soul, X Clan, Kid and Play, and the list goes on and on. He's also one of the members of X Clan. Additionally, uh, he is a staunch community activist. He practices what he preaches, uh, one of the founders of the One Hood Enterprise. And uh, he's going to talk some more about all of these endeavors that he's involved in. Let's give it up one more time for Mr. Paradise. Sort of like doing different things. That's how I got into promotions and management. So I'm not a rapper. Either. <laughs> wow. Uh, 
Now I really feel old. <laughs> but I, I'm still, I still have the connection because she said she was a Zulu way from Atlanta. And I actually first encountered uh, hip hop. My name is Paradise Gray, by the way. Where Pittsburgh at? Pittsburgh out? I was actually in a game in the Bronxdale Projects called the Black Spades. And I was a baby spade. And the warlord of our game, the Black Spades, is a gentleman by the name of Africa Van But uh, I didn't experience hip hop from BAM first, though. The first time I saw hip hop was in uh, an old laundry room that a DJ that lived on the second floor of my building he had cleared out all the old washers and dryers, moved them to the side, and set up his turntables in there because his mom was kicking him out because he had the music too loud. So one day I'm walking by the, the what's now a community room, and I hear all this music coming out of there, and I peek in, and a guy by the name of Disco King Mario is in there with two turntables, and he's mixing a song called Gotta Get a Nut. You know, and I never heard nothing like that before. And I'm standing there checking it out. Charlie says, I love my good and plenty because it's been looking good. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. So I was like, wow. So that was the first time I saw a DJ DJing with Disco King Mario in an old laundry room. And um, I was hooked from that moment on. Yeah. Um, you know, me and Paradise uh, go back, this gentleman here, <clears throat> my, I have several starts in, in, in hip-hop, one of which was at the club Latin Quarters. You know, we breeze over this, this club Latin Quarters, we just say and keep it moving. But this was one of the premier places where most of the rappers you hear today, uh, and not like today's rappers, I mean like the guys from the 80s, 86, 87, 88, even the 90s, uh, in that sense, came out of this one place called Latin Quarters. And even if he was in Philadelphia, like say, Jazzy Jeff and the Fresh Prince, for instance, uh, they would come from Philadelphia to play at Latin Quarters, or at least just be in the house even to hear the new stuff that was going on. Hip hop has many stars. Not many stars, but let's say many stars. It has several stars. There's cool DJ Herb in 1973, a place called Cedar Park. 1520 Central Avenue in the Bronx is where Herc lived. Uh, and in the community center is where he first started playing the breaks of records. 1973, 1520 Central Avenue in the Bronx. Now between 1972 and 1974, I was living in the building next to 1520 Central Avenue. It was a building called 1600. So I'm about seven years old there in 1600 Central Avenue, and Cool Herc would be playing in the next building in the community center. We could hear the music, but we couldn't go inside, we were too young. So one day, his sister, Cindy, said, Herc, can you, you know, take your, well, she had asked me to play for her birthday party. And the community center had gotten so packed with Cool Herc parties that he took the party outside to the local park. And right there is when free block parties started to get popular. They were already known across the country, but Cool Herc popularized it. He started adding breaks like this, like James Brown would have a song, um, uh, one, two, three, four, hit it, boom, boom, ba, 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 ba. And most DJs would just let the song play out and that would be the song. But Cool Herc would keep lifting the needle up and dropping it back on the original break. So he would go, one, two, three, four, hit it, boom, boom, ba, 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 ba. Herc would lift the needle up, drop it back again, and go, boom, just like that. One, two, three, four, hit it, boom, boom, ba, 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 boom. One, two, three, four, hit it. Boom, boom, ba, 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 ba. And one of the people you really want to see, I would advise the university to bring this guy here, is a guy named Grand Wizard Theodore. 
Yes. Grandpa and Theodore has mastered the technique of needle dropping. The original DJ technique, before there was turntables, two turntables and a mixer, you had one turntable and you dropped the needle on the record each time you know you wanted to break the play again. That was cool her. Now Africa Bambada is the next beginning, at least for me as well. I'm trying to hurry up with this as well to give you a clear picture. Africa Bambada puts the principles into hip hop. 